Hey there, everyone. Um, we're going to get started in just a few minutes. Um, we're going to give you, we're going to give everyone a little bit of time to join the event. And um, like I said, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Thanks. All right, everyone, thanks for joining the Become a Spreadsheet Guru Hangout on Air. Um, I just wanted to touch on a few things before we get started, uh, just a couple notes and reminders. Um, so this presentation is going to be recorded and available immediately after we get finished on our YouTube page. And you can also find it tomorrow at googleguru.com slash university. Um, I'm joined by the Better Cloud Director of Marketing, Taylor Gould, as well. And so he's going to be fielding some of your questions and then relaying them to me along the way and chiming in when he has anything uh, useful to say about uh, spreadsheets in general. So having said that, we'll go over um, how you can view the Hangout on Air. So you can view the stream on YouTube, but we recommend checking it out on the event page on Google Plus because you can ask questions with the Q&A app there and then like I said Taylor will uh, relay, relay, relay them to me along the way. So what you're going to learn with this presentation. So a few of the things that we're going to cover are um, when you should use Google Spreadsheets and when you should use Microsoft Excel there's, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely big Google Spreadsheets fans, but there's certainly some use cases that a few of you may need Microsoft Excel for. And then for those of you who are just making the move to Google Apps, we're going to talk about some really helpful tips for making the switch from Microsoft Excel to Google Spreadsheets. Then we'll get into how you can put together really presentation-worthy Google Spreadsheets. So that's something that I know a lot of you have been concerned with when you're just getting started with spreadsheets, and so this is going to make your presentation look a lot better, as well as um, you know, being presentation worthy. And then we'll also talk about some really cool automation tools that we like, where you can automate your Google spreadsheets as so you can save yourself time, along with adding some really great functionality as well. So before we get into the actual presentation, I just want to talk about Google Guru for those of you who aren't too familiar with the website, or just to recap for those of you who are. Um, Google Guru is the one-stop website for everything you need to know about Google Apps. So 
if you've recently completed a migration and you need some beginner tips and tricks, um, or if you have been on the platform for a while and you're looking for some more advanced um, training videos or something like that, there's really everything you need to know about Google Apps is on googleguru.com. One thing that we've been pushing a lot for recently is our Google Guru Contributor Program. So as of right now, we have 17 contributors who have posted over 60 videos and articles, so we're really excited about that. If you're interested in learning more about the Contributor Program, you can go to googleguru.com slash contribute. We also send out uh, daily tips and tricks, daily tips and tricks through our Google Guru daily newsletter. So if you're interested in receiving those via email, along with some really great promotions from our partners, then you can go to googleguru.com slash register. Um, the latest project that we have going on right now is called Guru University. So Guru University is a brand new section of our website where you can find in-depth training resources on the most important Google Apps features. So if you have just made the move to Google Apps, you know that there's a lot of Google Apps training resources out there. But most of these focus on just the basic tools for Google Apps. So there's definitely a place for that. We, you know, we, we definitely think those are useful. Um, but to get the most out of the platform, you really need to know the best practices and a little bit more advanced tutorials. So that's where Guru University comes in. So as of right now, we have our spreadsheets course available. So the spreadsheets course touches on a, a lot of things that we're going to go over today. So if you'd like to revisit some of this content, you can go to googleguru.com slash university and check out the 11 course, uh, the 11 video course on Google Spreadsheets. Um, having said all that, let's go ahead and get started with the Become a Spreadsheets Guru uh, presentation. So first of all, we, we definitely feel that Google Spreadsheets is the better spreadsheet tool for the majority of you. Um, the real-time collaboration and commenting that comes with Google is really unparalleled, and it's, it brings a, uh, a great, a great um, a great tool to Google Spreadsheets. And another great, uh, great tool in Google Spreadsheets is the ability to maintain only one spreadsheet rather than emailing back and forth dozens of different versions of a spreadsheet. And for the most part, most of us only use a spreadsheet for editing and analyzing basic data, which is what Google's great for. And it also brings in that sharing capability as well. Um, on the other hand, Excel is definitely useful for specific uh, needs and use cases. For, so for example, if you are doing some complex modeling, uh, for those of you in accounting and finance, um, if you are analyzing large amounts of data, or if you're a power user who's inside a spreadsheet every day, then Microsoft Excel might be the right tool for you. And I think uh, one thing hopefully many of you will realize is that there's some use cases where you may think that you have to use Excel, but spreadsheets is improving every day, every month. Um, and especially with some of the tools we're going to show you, you can start moving some of those use cases into spreadsheets. Um, so we'll get more into the details, but just something to keep in mind. I, I feel like every three or four months, I, I have one new kind of use case that I can take care of in spreadsheets instead of having to open up Excel. Yeah, and the big thing is that people, when they use Google Spreadsheets, they say, "Oh, well, I can do this in Excel, but I can't do this. I can't do it in Google Spreadsheets." Well, for most cases, that's not necessarily true. You just need to know where to look. So, continuing the comparison, what does Google do well with spreadsheets? So, like I mentioned before, the real-time collaboration is huge. One of our favorite feature is the ability to obviously chat inside of Google Spreadsheet, but also be able to tag people in comments in specific cell. So you can say, you know, tag one of your colleagues in a, in a comment on a cell, 
and they can know exactly what specific piece of data that you're talking about. Auto saving is definitely a is something that we take for granted. I think for those of us who have been on Google spreadsheets for a while, so um, you know you don't really think about having to. If you've been on spreadsheets for a while, you don't really think about having to save your file uh, over and over again to make sure you don't lose sensitive data. But for those of you who have just made the switch, I think that's something that you're really going to love. There's also some live data interaction with Google Spreadsheets. So since spreadsheets are web-based, there's a lot of uh, cool functions and tools that can bring in live data from the internet and have it interact with your spreadsheet. And also, Google Spreadsheets are accessible from any device. So like I mentioned, it's, it's web-based, so you can access it from your laptop at home and make changes to a spreadsheet. And then when you come into work, you can view the updated version without having to make uh, send yourself an email or anything like that. So there's also plenty of offline capabilities as well, which are really easy to set up. And so some features in Excel that aren't in Google Spreadsheets, we're not, um, we're not naive. There's definitely some spreadsheets that Excel users are missing. Um, the main concern that I hear about are uh, these advanced keyboard shortcuts for power users. So these are this is something that Excel users have mastered over over the years, and they have their their specific way of doing things. And making the switch to Google Spreadsheets may slow them down. So I understand that some of these advanced keyboard shortcuts are something that you may need if you're if you're spending a lot of time inside of a spreadsheet. Um, Selecting non-contiguous ranges at the same time is also a big concern. So, for example, you can't select a range of cells in the top left-hand corner of your spreadsheet and select a range of cells in the bottom right-hand corner of your spreadsheet and then apply a formula or some formatting changes to those different ranges. So uh, that's a little bit of a concern for some people. And there is a, uh, a cell limit as well as some, some function limits. But you know these tap out at you know hundreds of thousands of cells or thousands of functions, and if you're dealing with that that much data, you probably should be using some sort of database software anyway. So now we're going to talk about how you can put together a really presentation-worthy spreadsheet. So one thing that I hear from uh, a lot of Google Guru users is that they know how to use all the basic features in Google Spreadsheets, but they they feel like their presentations aren't really, or their spreadsheets aren't really presentation worthy. So they don't feel comfortable taking their Google Spreadsheet to their supervisor or their boss and having it look really good. So we're going to cover some of our favorite features that can help make formatting your spreadsheet easier. And a lot of these things are found, are, are Microsoft Excel features. Um, but you just need to know where to look inside of Google Spreadsheets to get that same functionality. So the first tool that we're going to talk about is freezing rows and columns. So if you have a long list of data, it can sometimes be tough to keep track of which header corresponds to which row of or which column of data. So I think this is probably something We've all run into, you're scrolling through a long list of data, and you kind of get lost um, for what which header goes with which, uh, which column. So one way to combat that is by adding a frozen row, as you can see here. So uh, the, the first example in the top left corner is without the frozen row. And then you can see in the bottom right, this little gray pipe below the header um, keeps all of those headers in place. So no matter how far you scroll down through your Google spreadsheet, you'll always see those headers locked into place. So this is a great way to keep track of your data. and make, It also makes it um, a little bit more visually appealing as well. So if you'd like to freeze rows or columns in your spreadsheet, all you need to do is go to the View tab and select Freeze Rows or Freeze Columns and then there's a little bit of customization there that you can do. Um, the next tool that we're going to talk about is conditional formatting, which is personally my favorite formatting tool. So conditional formatting allows you to 
preset conditions on a cell based on various inputs. So in this spreadsheet, you can see that I have some revenue and profit numbers. This is a, a yearly spreadsheet that I update every month. And so all my numbers are broken down into the various months. So one way this, uh, this presentation might look a little bit better is if I change the positive numbers in the change in profit column to green backgrounds and add some red backgrounds to the negative numbers. So this makes it a lot, a lot more visually appealing, especially if you're just looking at the spreadsheet at a glance. So with conditional formatting, I can make these changes without having to do it on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, which can definitely get really, really tedious. So all I need to do is select my range of cells and then click on the Format tab and select Conditional Formatting, which will bring up another window, which you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, where you can apply some rules for your conditional formatting. So in this case, like I mentioned before, I want to make sure that my positive numbers are given a green background and my negative numbers are given a red background. So I have anything greater than zero gets applied a green background, and anything less than zero gets applied a red background. So as you can see here, this is kind of what the final product looks like. This is a lot more, uh, it's a lot easier to take a glance at this and see how a month has gone uh, in aggregate. So um, rather than doing this on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, using conditional formatting makes it a lot easier to just have Google Spreadsheets do the work for me rather than waste my time applying formatting one by one. So conditional formatting is available in a number of different ways, not just numbers. So you can have formatting be applied based off of specific text, numbers like I mentioned, and even dates. So the next uh, formatting tool I want to get into is one th one thing I wanted to sorry. say about conditional formatting. Sorry to interrupt there. It's just that you know if you've used it in Excel, these this probably doesn't blow away, blow you away the way you can do it in Google Spreadsheets. But um, if you haven't used conditional formatting before, I highly recommend that you look into it, especially if you're uh, consistently presenting large amounts of data or large reports to a manager or an executive or maybe a client because it just makes it so much easier for the viewer of your report to process a large amount of data at once and kind of get a feel for um, you know, what's going on in the report without having to read every single item. Um, one more thing to note, uh, since Andrew, I'm looking at the questions and Andrew's looking at the presentation, I see we've gotten a lot of great questions already. We're going to save at least 15 minutes, probably more like 20 minutes to go through questions at the end. Um, and we'll actually get into a spreadsheet and, and show you answers to some of your questions. Um, okay, so we'll just keep going ahead with formatting. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is uh, Paste Special, which is another feature that you can, that you're familiar with in Excel, um, which makes formatting your data in Google Spreadsheets a lot more efficient. So, what you can do is copy a range of cells like you normally would, and then choose exactly what you want to paste into new cells from the, the previous range of cells. So you can see here in this example, after I have copied my change in profit column and right-clicked in the other column, I can choose from a number of different number of different formatting options. So I can choose to only paste the values, which is great if you're pasting uh, if you want to just transfer the numbers and not the formula as well, which can definitely screw with some some things there. And you can paste formula and conditional formatting as well, which is definitely really cool. So in this example here, where I'm going through and having these formatting changes on a month-by-month -month basis, I can go ahead and paste the formula. So whenever the data is entered, it automatically is reflected with the change in profit. And I can apply the conditional formatting as well. 
which saves me time because I can do this in advance and I don't really need to ever do it again. So if you take a look at what the final product looks like, you can see that I can apply the formula and the conditional formatting changes well in advance. So whenever my employees update the spreadsheet, it's automatically updated with the formulas and conditional formatting. There's also a few basic formatting tools that I wanted to touch on that you can find in the toolbar in your Google Spreadsheet. So first of all, the paint format icon, which you can see on the left. It's a little uh, paint roller. And this is pretty similar to the Paste Special option. So it allows you to quickly transfer formatting from one cell or range of cells and then apply it to another. So it's like I said, it's similar to Paste Special, and it just makes the formatting changes and applying them in bulk really easy. Border formatting allows you to adjust the type of borders that your cells have. So if you want to add something a little bit more uh, a little bit more stronger than the gray grid lines that you see there. You can apply border formatting to your spreadsheet and you can adjust the thickness of the border, border formatting as well. Wrap text is the last icon over there on the right. Um, this prevents your text from being cut off if the cell is too short to contain all the information. So you probably noticed that if you have a lot of text in a spreadsheet uh, the cell automatically gets resized so you can see all of your text. So this is enabled by default. So if that's a little frustrating and you feel like large entries are messing up the formatting of your spreadsheet, you can disable wrap text by clicking on this icon here and this will allow you to keep all of your cells nice and neat and make it a lot more uh, easy to keep track of. You can also hide the grid lines, like I mentioned before. So you can see in the top left, I have these light gray grid lines. So if you want to, if you want to get a little bit more customization there, you can just click on the View tab and uncheck the grid lines option. And then if you look in the bottom right corner there, you can see I have a spreadsheet where I've applied some custom border formatting and removed the grid lines. Now we're going to talk about how you can automate your Google Spreadsheet. So these are some tools that are designed to make you more efficient while you're in Google Spreadsheets, as well as adding some really cool functionality as well. So data validation is a really great tool that you can use in Google Spreadsheets. So data validation makes organize, organizing data especially when it's entered by collaborators, a lot easier to keep track of because you can ensure that it's entered in the correct format. So for example, if you are asking people to enter in an email address, you can make sure that it's entered incorrectly the first time rather than having to go back and making changes on your own. So this is a big time saver, especially when you are managing a bunch of different collaborators inside the same spreadsheet. So to apply data validation, you just need to select the range of cells where you'd like to apply it, and then go to the Data tab and select Validation. So these cells can contain text, numbers, dates, and people can present, be presented a number of different options to choose from. So you could actually display an in-cell drop-down button, which is what I'm going to show here. So what I've done is selected my criteria from another range of cells in my Google Spreadsheet, and then I'm going to display an in-cell drop-down button so my collaborators have something to choose from. So this keeps them from entering in information that I don't want them to enter, and it saves me time from having to go in and cleaning up the spreadsheet along the way. So you can see the final product here makes like I said, it makes entering in data a lot easier and keeps me from having to go back and make changes later on. So data validation is a big time saver for sure.
Next, I'm going to talk about notification rules in Google Spreadsheets. So notification rules can send you an email when a number of actions are taken inside of Google Spreadsheet. So just one thing to keep in mind, notification rules are available to anyone with edit or view access inside of a Google Spreadsheet. So that's just something to keep in mind. But those people that have only view access won't be able to see exactly who has made the changes, whereas people with edit access will be able to see the specific people. So in this case, I've selected a range of cells where I'd like to apply the notification rules. So notification rules can be applied on a cell basis or a range of cell basis, and you can even apply them to a specific sheet as well as the entire file. So I've selected my range of cells, and then I can click on the Tools tab and Notification Rules. Next, you'll see the customization options that you have for notification rules. So you can be notified whenever changes are made to a specific range of cells. You can be notified, like I said, when changes are made to the entire sheet. And you can be notified if a collaborator has been added or moved. So that's a great option if it's some sensitive information and you want to make sure that only the right people have access to the spreadsheet. If you think this is a spreadsheet that's going to be updated very frequently and you don't want to stay on top of it that much, you can say email me a daily digest where you can view the changes or you can be notified immediately whenever a change has been made. Next, I want to talk about uh, protecting ranges in Google Spreadsheets. So one thing that I've heard from Google Guru users is that there's a little bit of concern with not being with collaborators being able to unhide ranges in a Google Spreadsheet. So you can't completely hide uh, ranges from someone with edit rights, but you can prevent them from actually making changes to the spreadsheet. So it's not, a, it's not a perfect solution, but it does give you some protection of your information. So in this case, I've selected a range of cells in my Google spreadsheet. And I can right click and select name and protect range. This will bring up a pretty familiar sharing screen that you've probably seen before. So this brings up the sharing settings of the particular spreadsheet, as well as all of the collaborators who currently have access to it. So in this case, I have access to it, as well as uh, demo admin. So I can say demo admin continues to have full edit access to this range of cells, or I can limit him to comment only access to the range of cells. Next, I want to talk about uh, the import range function. So this is another feature that some of you may remember from Excel. Um, it's not a, a native feature in the toolbar or anything like that, but it can be applied with the import range function. So this allows you to pull in a range of cells from another Google spreadsheet so you can consolidate your data and not have to make changes to multiple spreadsheets. You can just update one and have all the changes reflected in another spreadsheet. So I, you can see there that I say uh, real-time updates with an asterisk. So the, the real-time means it may take a few minutes. So if you have both spreadsheets open in tabs side by side with one another and you don't see the changes reflected immediately, just be patient. And you should see the changes in you know, 10, 15 minutes or maybe even less. So like I mentioned, this is a function. So you need to choose the cell where you'd like to have your import range function start. And go ahead and type in the function, which is equal sign import range. And then you need to insert the spreadsheet key. So you find that by taking a look at the unique URL that your Google Spreadsheet has. So you should can look on the URL bar at the top of your screen and then select the 
information after the T equal sign and before the ampersand. So you can pull that information and then enter it into the formula as well as the range of cells. So after I've done that, I can click enter and it may take a moment for the information to pull through, but after I'm done, you can see that my my data is updated in my new spreadsheet. And if I want to make changes periodically to the older version, I can do that and not have to worry about updating them in the consolidated version. Uh, now I want to talk about text to columns, which is a another feature that Excel users may be familiar with. I actually believe uh, Eric from Spanlink asked a question about this in the event page earlier about how you could perform text to columns. So this is not a native feature in Google Spreadsheets. You need to make use of a Google Apps script, which is, if you haven't used it before, Google Apps script is great and it brings a lot more functionality to your spreadsheets. So which, if you're not familiar with text to columns, it allows you to take uh, text from one cell or a range of cell and then split it off into individual columns. So this is a huge time saver and keeps you from having to do something manually. And in this case, you can brag about using Apps Script for the first time and show people how smart you are. So what I've done here is I have a spreadsheet where I have collaborators enter in their email address. And rather than going through and, ha and slicing off the domain manually, what I can do is use the text to columns as app script and separate that data at the uh, at sign. So this keeps me from having to do a bunch of work manually and automates a process to save me some time. So what I'm going to need to do is select the Tools tab and Script Gallery. And then once the window pops up, you want to search for Text to Columns. And then you should be able to find the uh, Text to Columns app script and um, go ahead and apply that. So you want to click Install and then go ahead and get started. So what this app script will do is present a new a new tab in your Google Spreadsheet. So you can see this here, the Advanced tab. So I want to select all of my data, and then click on the Advanced tab, and then go to, in this case, I'm going to use text to columns with a custom separator. So this normally takes, um, splits off your data with the comma sign, I believe. So in this case, I'm going to make sure that it knows that I want to split at the at sign. So after I enter in that, you can see that my data is automatically split up where the last names are in the last name column and then the domain is also split off as well. So like I said, this makes the process a lot easier for me and saves me time from having to do that on my own. So I just wanted to recap from uh, the presentation so far. So this is this is the uh, the end of the presentation that we have prepared. We'll get into questions in a little bit. But we talked about when's the best time to use Google Spreadsheets versus Excel. Um, if you're just getting started with Google Spreadsheets, what are the best practices for making the transition? And how can you create a presentation-worthy spreadsheet that you can show off to your boss or your colleagues or your anyone like that. So there's also some great automation tools that you can use to save some time, which we covered. And just a couple Google Guru reminders that I wanted to mention. Um, if you are interested in joining our Google Guru contributor program, you can go to googleguru.com slash contribute. If you're interested in registering for our daily Google Apps newsletter, just go to googleguru.com slash register. And if you want some advanced training and tutorials and some of the material that we cover today, you can go to googleguru.com slash university for our comprehensive training guides. So 
Having said all that, I'm going to turn it over to Taylor, who's going to look at some of these questions that we have from the audience. Um, so would you give me switch presenter over to me? All right. Just one second here. All right, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. All right, I think we've got our uh, issues taken care of here. <laughs> So let me turn my screen share on. OK, so now you can see a spreadsheet that we're in real quick. All right, so I'm going to look at the questions on Andrew's screen. I'll go through some of the questions that have been asked. OK, it looks like the number one question is, how do I add um, multiple rows to a spreadsheet at one time. So this is a pretty easy one. You just need to select the number of rows that you want to insert, then right click, and you can insert above or below. You can delete, resize, clear. You can do a number of different things there. Um, I had another question around how do you paint format from one cell to multiple cells. So paint format actually supports this natively. You can see here I have one cell here, and I want to paint format that same formatting to a number of cells. So you just click Paint Format, and then you drag it down to all of your cells, and that will apply across the board. Uh, we had another question around the sum if formula. Uh, the question was, is there an equivalent formula to sum if in Google Spreadsheets? So sum if is actually supported in Google Spreadsheets, and I'll show you an example right here. You can see I have a list of regions here, just North America and South America, and then a column for revenue. So what if I want to sum all of the revenue entries that pair with the North America region? You can see my sum if formula here. I select um, the sort of lookup range first, then you enter the value you want your kind of ifing against, and then you enter the uh, range where you want to sum the values there. So it works uh, just like it does in Excel, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so some, unfortunately, some things that you cannot do in Google Spreadsheets. Um, is it possible, question from Anders, is it possible in any way to group columns so that you can expand or compress them by clicking on a plus sign? It is not today. Uh, unfortunately, this is something that I've heard a lot of people asking for. I always recommend a tool called Smartsheet. Um, it's kind of like a, a web-based spreadsheet on steroids, and they have the expanding and collapsing uh, rows just like Excel does. Uh, we had a few people asking questions around locking down certain cells so that only particular people can edit them. So Andrew went over this, actually. You can uh, use the protected ranges functionality. So if I didn't want anyone to be able to edit the sum if formula, I would just right click and say name protect range and then I click protect and I can select who has access and I haven't shared the sheet with anyone else yet so it's not showing anyone there. Um, I'll share it with Andrew real quick and then you'll see he has edit access to the spreadsheet but when I go to protect the range I can change his access on the range just to comment only. So that's a good way to protect uh, individual cells from being edited by, by some of your collaborators. Um, will there ever be a functionality to look up data in other spreadsheets instead of using the import data or import range functions? Not that I'm aware of. I think import range is a pretty acceptable workaround for now, um, just because you know, you're doing relatively the same thing. You just need a little bit more space to do it in. Uh, import range does dynamically update the uh, source data. <clears throat> um, let's see here. 
can you select multiple non-contiguous uh, cells? No, unfortunately, you can't. I haven't really heard anything about when that's going to be fixed. I'm just I'm, that may be a technical limitation to you know the fact that it's in a browser. I'm not sure on that one. Um, let's see. How do you customize the margins when you're printing a spreadsheet? This is another one that um, I've heard a lot over the past couple of years. Well, not a lot, but every now and then. And um, I think Google just hasn't prioritized it because they don't think that many people print spreadsheets. But for now, unfortunately, you do need to uh, export to Excel if you want to customize the margin size before printing a spreadsheet. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so someone has corrected me on the paint format question and said that the question really was how do you keep the paint format active so you can continue clicking multiple cells? I think you can, can you lock the yeah. color in place, double clicking it. That may actually. I think I think that functionality exists in Google Docs, but okay. I don't think it's actually available in Google Spreadsheets. Um, I, I could be wrong, but as from what I remember, Google Google Docs supports it, but um, Google Spreadsheets do not at the moment. We actually have a video on that on the Google Guru site. So if you just go to our site and search for Paint Format, um, you can see how it works in Google Docs and and try the same approach in Google Spreadsheets. Let's see here. We're just going through a few more of your questions here. A lot of good questions. Thanks for submitting all these. Um, is there a way to limit visibility of one or multi or one of out of multiple tabs on a sheet? So you can't limit visibility, but you can li limit um, edit rights by using this protect sheet uh, option here. So. You know, by default, anyone that's invited as a collaborator has the same permissions on all tabs in the sheet. But if I wanted to protect sheet one uh, so that only I have the rights to edit it, I can just select this and say only me. And then Andrew, my collaborator who has edit rights on the on the entire spreadsheet, does not have access to that tab. Um, can't you hide a tab? Yeah. In the spreadsheet Taylor, is that you can hide? So you can hide, but if someone so that will hide the tab in a Google spreadsheet. But anyone that has edit access to the Google spreadsheet will be able to um, select view and then hidden sheets and display the sheets. So it's not a complete solution, but it does work in some cases. Hmm. Um. One question from Randy. I noticed that if I type of if I type a string longer than the width of the cell, but do not want wrap text on, the characters will not flow over into the empty cells to the right. This is a useful feature of Excel. Um, that's yeah. That's just kind of a fundamental difference in the way that um, you know Excel and spreadsheets handle this. So you know, I'll turn wrap text off, and that text gets hidden. All I can recommend is just expanding the width of the column, or if it's appropriate, um, merging those two cells so that you have more space. OK, just looking through a few more. I think we have about 80 questions here. so. <laughs> Um, a couple, couple of people asking just, you know, how do I deal with large amounts of data in Google Spreadsheets? The answer is really just to admit <laughs> that uh, at a certain point, you're really going to need to use a different tool. And Excel, you know, because it's a downloadable application, can handle a little bit more data than spreadsheets. But at a certain point, you know, you may want to look into using more of kind of a, a purpose-built database uh, software like you know, access or, or Google has plenty of tools 
uh, there as well. My personal cutoff is at about 100,000 cells. Um, I'll look to use a different tool besides Google Spreadsheets because it's, it's just not going to work as quickly, especially if you have a lot of formulas. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Uh, question. I would like to add other users so that they're notified when changes are made in a spreadsheet. Question from Courtney. Um, yeah, this is something that we touched on briefly. Uh, you can set up notification rules for anything in the spreadsheet. Um, you know, so I can say notify me when any changes are made, when any of these particular cells are changed. Uh, there's a number of different events that can trigger a notification. And if it's a spreadsheet that has a high volume of changes and is going to generate a high volume of notifications, you can choose to get a daily digest instead of getting an email right away. And I think Andrew has one thing to add. Yeah, I think part of what the question Courtney was asking was if she's adding collaborators to a spreadsheet, how, how do they know if changes are being made? So you can't set up notification rules for someone else. Um, you can imagine why you wouldn't want to do that. That could really upset some people if they're getting a bunch of notification <laughs> rules from a spreadsheet. So um, our only suggestion is just to make them aware of the notification rules feature and you know, if, if need be, go ahead and set it up for them. OK. I think that may be about it. Um, you know, we had a lot of questions, but it looks like a lot of them were similar. And uh, if there's anything we haven't covered, just feel free to shoot us an email, uh, guru at guruvideos.com. We're always looking for ideas for new videos, and we want things to research about Google Apps because we want Google Guru to be, you know, the go-to destination for Google Apps tips and tricks. Uh, so I'm going to hand it back over to Andrew to close it up for us here. Um, yeah, well, that pretty much takes care of everything. All right. I think I'm back on presenter now. Um, so, yeah, Taylor pretty much covered that. That pretty much takes care of everything. Um, like you mentioned, if you have any more questions, you can email them to us at guru at guruvideos.com. You can also keep submitting questions in the event page here and we'll do our best to go back and see if there's anything that we missed. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, please check out Guru University. It's googleguru.com slash university for these in-depth training tutorials. And if you'd like to give us some feedback on the presentation, just go to googleguru.com slash feedback. So really appreciate you guys stopping by for the presentation. And uh, we'll, we'll try to do this again soon in the next few months. So thanks again, everyone.